so I'm gonna attempt to do pneumonia in five minutes or less. So what is pneumonia? Pneumonia is inflammation of the lung parenchyma, and what that just means is an inflammation of the alveoli and bronchioles. So why do people get pneumonia, Amanda? It's because sometimes clients can have an impaired swallowing or gag reflex. So they can aspirate these gastric contents into their lungs and that increases their risk for infection. And then maybe like a brain injury or substance use. So if people use an excessive amount of alcohol, that decreases the macro macrophages in your body to fight infection. So they're more susceptible to it. And then medical history. Are they immunocompromised? Are they getting chemotherapy from cancer? Are they, do they have HIV or AIDS? So there's many different causes and reasons. We'll get into that when we talk about microorganisms specifically. So what are the different types? There is atypical, it's not a normal pattern. So these are viruses in the, like the mycoplasma, which I have a really good way to remember this. And then typical. So that is that actual bacteria in the alveoli itself. And so you're going to see this in like acute bacterial um, infections. Bronchopneumonia, what is that? It is patchy pieces of um, inflammation or that infection, sorry, infection, that is going to be in multiple lobes. So remember on the left side, you have two lobes in your lung. On the right side, you have three so with patchy, you might have it in maybe two lobes on the left, and they're going to be just these little pieces in multiple lobes. Whereas with low bar pneumonia, it's the whole lobe. So you're going to have maybe the left upper lobe, the whole thing is going to have that infection, and it's usually just confined to one lobe. So what are the types of infection? First, there's community. So this is gonna be outside a hospital or healthcare setting. And the most common type is streptococcal pneumonia. Um, and then there's a healthcare associated. So that's not a hospital still. It's gonna be like the, um, you know, like a clinic. And you'll see different infections there. Hospital acquired. So this is when a person was already in the hospital, they were sick, and then they started developing a new, um, bacteria or microorganisms, so 48 to 72 hours later. And the most common type you see is Staph aureus. And then ventilator associated. So people are having tubes put down their mouth. They have, so to help them with breathing. And that tubing can develop uh, what's called biofilm. And that's just a fancy term for like bacteria, sugars, and proteins that kind of accumulate on this tubing and it actually can move into the lungs. And that's what ventilator associated pneumonia is. So let's get into the fun part, the microorganisms themselves. So acute bacterial, otherwise known as typical, because it has bacteria in the alveoli, it, it, the type is pneumococcal, I can never pronounce that right, pneumonia, or other types are streptococcus or staph aureus, and these are found in the upper respiratory and they're unilateral lobar. So not bilateral, it's usually in one, one side, right? Unilateral, and then lobar, so it's gonna be the whole lobe. Patho. So what is going on here? There's an inflammatory response because you have that infection present in your body. Freaks out. It's like, okay, let's throw those, you know, cardinal signs of illness at them. Remember of infection or inflammation? It's the heat swelling, redness, pain. So all of a sudden your body's going to be like, okay, alveoli, let's get a dematis and um, let's do the exudate and con consolidation of lung tissue so that's a fancy term too what that means consolidation of lung tissue is that air in the lungs is going to be replaced by something else so like blood fluid gastric contents whatever so you're going to see these um, symptoms which one is pleuritis and pleuritis is just that infection of the lung um, of that pleural space and then the next thing which is pleural effusion, which is excess fluid in the pleural cavity. So this is seen in that staph aureus, right? And then there's an abscess um, that can also be seen, da, da, da. And then lung empyema, 
which is an accumulation of purulent exudate in the pleural cavity. So empyema pleur exudate. Think think E E. M I can never pronounce this. Empyema exudate. Think of it. Empyema exudate. Perfect. Okay, and so it's abrupt, it's quick, you know, you get this bacterial infection and boy, within five minutes, you are sick. So what symptoms are you going to see? There's a big difference between bacterial and virus. And I'm going to show you the biggest one that is always seen. So on a test, whenever you see this word, you're going to think bacterial. So cough with rust-colored purulent sputum. So if they are producing sputum, that's most likely going to mean that it's bacterial because if they have a dry cough, they're not producing anything with the cough, that's going to be more viral. That's the big difference there. So cough with rust colored purulent sputum. Remember, because the empyema is making that exudate and that, uh, that purulent drainage. So that's where you're going to see that pleuritic, which just means chest pain, uh, dyspnea, cyanosis, fever, chills, and decreased breath sounds. So let's head on. This is bacterial. This is typical. Um, this is lovar. Okay, so there's that. Now let's move on to atypical. So what is atypical? As you remember, I said it's a virus or mycoplasma. Atypical pneumonia, mycoplasma, mygo, meaning like I can walk, mygo. So mycoplasma is walking pneumonia. Okay, just the way to remember that. So what's the path with that? You're going to see that patchy inflammatory changes, so the bronchopneumonia with the patchy pieces and multiple lobes, and the alveolar septum and interstitial tissue of the lung. This is going to have a gradual onset, and you're going to see that dry, you're always going to see in viruses, that dry, hacking, non-productive cough. They could have also have fever, headache, and myalgias, which is muscle aches. Okay, so this is walking pneumonia viral pneumonia going down if you guys can see um so what is that caused by when you think viral i want you to think of virus so it's first going to be caused by influenza or adenovirus it can also be caused by herpes or measles so with viral pneumonia i mean think about it because this is one that's more going to be seen in the community so maybe it's a way to remember is like in the community, there's a lot of old people coming together, maybe at like a community center, um, playing bridge, whatever. Just think of it that way. So it affects older people or people with chronic conditions. This is for viral pneumonia. Okay, so first you get influenza and then it can spiral into this type of pneumonia. Okay, my next favorite one. Um, it's... I pronounce it, I make it French. I'll tell you guys why. Le Jeunet, and I'll tell you why. So this is by the microorganism. Le Jeunella pneumophilia. Pneumo, remember, philic, philia. So it's from water. I always think Perrier, water. So Le Jeunella, water. So it is the consolidation of lung tissue. Remember what I said? It's that fancy term that just means placing air with something else from water. So remember, Le Jeunella, if it sounds French, think Perrier. <laughs> it's patchy or lobar. So it can have those like patches and multiple lobes um, or it can be one lobe. And then it's gradual onset and the symptoms are dry cough. As I said that, dry cough. Um, dyspnea, headache, uh, malaise, so fatigue, decreased appetite, diarrhea, myalgias and confusion. So think too, like, okay, you ingested this infectious water, you're gonna have diarrhea. Um, and something I also forgot to say, with walking pneumonia, some of these pneumonias that you see that are viral, the reason they're gradual onset is you see people, you know, especially with this one, walking around for a few weeks before they're finally like, okay, I got to stop. Like, I got to go in the doctor. I've had this cough. It hasn't produced anything, but I got to go in the doctor at this point. So it is, it can be very slow until people start really, as they wind, you know, down and keep going, they're going to feel more and more sick. Okay. Les journées. Let's go to the next 
uh, fancy one. Pneumocystitis Gerovesi. Gerovesi. Doesn't that sound like a Joker's name? Gerovesi. He's wearing a Joker's vest. You know how uh, Jokers can wear those like patchy uh, checkered vests? So it's caused by the microorganism Pneumocytis gerovesi. Jokers are funny guys. So this gerovesi is a fun guy. <laughs> Get it? Fun guy parasite. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> it affects people with AIDS, HIV, and immunocompromised. And the patho for this, you know, as I said, those jokers wear those checkered vests, you know, those patchy. So it's a patchy involvement in the lungs, which causes the alveoli to thicken. Remember, I was like, the body's going to freak out infection. Let's, let's get the swelling on. And um, it's also going to become edematous, as I said, and fill with phony protein rich fluid. And this one, it's a little different because it's abrupt. Um, this one too is a little bit more um, severe. So, because with this, you're going to have that symptom of the dry cough, but you're also going to see the tachypnea, shortness of breath, and significant respiratory distress and fever. So, a way to remember this is because jokers, sometimes when they're so funny, they take your breath away. I've been to some of those comedy clubs, and I swear I couldn't breathe from some of these jokes. So, remember, Gerovesi the Joker. Finally, aspiration pneumonia. So, the symptoms... You know, just think again, we talked about this, how they're aspirating, but this is actually really fatal. This is the leading cause of death in Alzheimer's patients. So the symptoms, you know, are pulmonary edema and respiratory failure and the complications that causes these abs abscesses, um, bronchiectasis, which is a chronic dilation of the bronchi and gangrene of pulmonary tissue. If you guys forgot what gangrene is, it's where it can like literally turn green and the tissues die. So pretty much the lung tissues die. It can be very um, fatal. So this is something you want to look at and I'm going to hopefully go over treatment more. This is way over five minutes, but pneumonia is complex. So love you guys. Bye.